Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of the cost of carry model as it applies to corn futures and the corn forward market. So what I've done is reproduce a version of the cost of carry model here in yellow. This tells us that we expect the forward price of corn to equal the spot price of corn multiplied by this exponential function. Why do we have an exponential function here? Well, that's just a way to grow forward the spot price at a continuously compounded rate. In this case, we're growing it forward. We're continuously compounding the spot price by the sum of two variables, the interest rate plus the storage cost of corn. That quantity is multiplied by the number of periods we're growing forward. Relative to the generic cost of carry model, I note that I'm omitting two variables. If you watched a previous tutorial, you know that the generic cost of carry model has fully four variables. I'm not including these two here in the green row. Specifically, I'm not including dividend or income. That's because I'm assuming corn doesn't pay a dividend. I'm also not including Y, the convenience yield. In fact, I'm, cons I'm assuming that storing corn or holding or carrying corn is the opposite of a convenience. It is in fact, it in fact incurs a cost. You may recall we can think of the convenience yield as a negative storage cost. These two directly offset. So what does it mean to store or carry corn? Well, the, whoever stores the corn incurs a cost not really a benefit so that's why I've got a value for the storage cost but not a value for the convenience yield okay given that I have these two I just need to make an assumption about the values I'm going to assume the interest rate is four percent per year divided by twelve months because my period is going to be monthly that gives me an interest rate of one third percent per month I'm also going to assume the storage cost is one percent per month I think I'm probably low here. This may be one and a half or two percent per month, but just for illustration's sake, I'm going to assume the cost to store corn is one percent per month. And what this means is this one percent is a constant percentage of the spot price. So I have the two values I need, and I can go down here and, and now estimate the forward price for each month as I go forward in time. So here I'll go out one month here and estimate the forward price and all I need to do is apply the formula. The spot I need to take the spot price here of six dollars per bushel. I rounded this off. I think it's currently higher than six dollars per bushel. So this is six hundred cents. That's my spot price. I'm going to multiply by the exponential function now. That's Excel's exponential function. Here's the E. Multiply that by the sum of my interest rate plus my storage cost, close parens, and I want to multiply by that by the number of months that I'm predicting forward. And then I'm going to close parens, and I get the theoretically estimated forward price of $6.08. I'm going to go in here and just cement these two cells with an absolute reference function key for so that I can copy this formula and now I'll just copy this formula down and it gives me a forward price at two months forward and a forward price at three months forward notice it's going up in a straight line and in fact the cost of carry model is predicting my forward price is going to rise in a linear fashion by exactly you guessed it the interest rate plus the cost to store corn so what we mean is if I'm going to buy a forward price, I'm going to, if I'm going to enter into a long position on a forward contract for corn, I need to compensate the counterparty who actually does store the corn in the meantime with both an interest rate and a storage cost. And you may be wondering, how does that hold up relative to the actual forward curve, as am I? So here I've compared the forward curve that I just started to calculate by applying the cost of carry model and that's in the, that's shown right here with small circles that's the straight line that I expect from the cost of carry model now I've superimposed that against an actual forward curve that I just pulled 
the data I just pulled this for and you can see there's a difference and this highlights a unique feature of and a unique and an important feature of the corn, corn forward market and that is we do see that the corn forward curve does rise well sort of along with our cost of carry model it does go up over time and as we go out here into these 2009 months it's going up as we expect because corn is being stored in the winter spring and summer months however if we take the United States corn is harvested in the fall so that's that's generally September October November and what happens here is that as we approach the fall months corn doesn't need to be stored that corn can go directly from harvest to the spot market and so the storage cost for corn is being reflected in the upward slope in the forward curve but then as we enter the harvest in the fall we see this drop in the forward curve to reflect that there aren't storage costs and so if we took this out typically this forward curve for cur for corn would exhibit these seasonal drops every year as the forward market anticipates the harvest during the fall so we can see that two things about the corn forward market one storage cost is a significant variable that contributes to what we would expect this contango in the near term months but also corn is a seasonal commodity that is harvested during the fall so we do expect these drops as the corn is harvested and again that cost of carry model is all theoretical this all omits the technical factors that pertain to supply and demand in particular the demand for corn that has a huge impact on the actual spot price as it evolves over time this is David Harper the Bonic Turtle thanks for your time